Welcome to Yes He Is. Yes He Is. Helping people know Jesus starts here. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful afternoon right here on yours and my number one radio station, Radio Christian Voice. And of course, I am super excited that you have taken time to join us today and be a part and parcel of today's edition of Yes He Is. Yes, He Is is a program that is designed to help young Christian uh, believers to effectively share their faith and, of course, share Jesus boldly. And how do we do that? We do that by learning from different experiences from all walks of lives. And today I am super excited to be joined by uh, Hannah, uh, Leah, as well as Esther. And um, we'll be having a wonderful conversation together. Good, Good day to you. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank right. you. So um, this is Esther. If you can see on the screens, you can see Esther right now. Yes. So who is Esther? Hey, I'm Esther. Um, I am American, but grew up in Germany. Mm. And yeah, I'm 29 years old and I've been working um, with young adults and in missions for the past nine years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have on the other side, that's uh, Leah and Hannah. How are you guys? so good thank you so much for having us here it's so great mm -hmm. all right so I'll, I'll start with you uh hannah just tell us a little bit more about yourself yes yeah i'm hannah i'm from germany original and um i'm since one year in mission and uh, god really called me and my husband together to mission and it's so great and since one year we just want to encourage young people to really grow as disciples of jesus and we are so happy that yeah now we are just in zambia so that's really <laughs> crazy for us yes awesome and we have leah as well how are you Hi, I'm good. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, I'm Leah. I'm 19. I'm from Canada. Mm. And I've been in missions for my five months. Mm, interesting. Um, so uh, what, what really brought you guys to, to, to Zambia? I know, you know, it's... You, you're probably measuring into evangelism and all. Mm -hmm. um, so just to get to learn more about that, um, just tell us a little bit more and we'll get into our topic today. Yes, yeah, so we all, we met in Germany uh, mm -hmm. in YWAM, that's Youth with a Mission and that's a mission mm -hmm. organization and it's all over the world. Um, and so the base in Lusaka invited us to come and um, to just join them to visit Zambia. And so now we are some weeks here in Zambia and just visiting different churches mm -hmm. and just see also how different churches are going out evangelism. Mm -hmm. And so we are just yeah with them and they just invited us for all of this. And so we were seeing a lot of streets here in Lusaka. We were <laughs> yeah, in a lot of different places and it's so good yeah really to be here mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. all right so the question that we have today is how prepared are you to share the gospel uh, i think th this question uh, cuts across you know nations countries continents yes. and race uh, w when you're born again um, it doesn't matter whether you're from zambia mm -hmm. <laughs> You're from Zimbabwe or you're from Canada. Uh, we're all called to do one thing, go out there and make disciples. But sometimes it's really hard, especially for young people, you know, to just start that conversation. Mostly people will think, where do I start from? How do I go about sharing my faith? So we'll start with maybe um, the fails. Have you ever had a time, I'll start with you, Esther. Have you ever had a time where you felt the Holy Spirit leading you to minister to someone, but you felt you were not really ready to or well prepared to, yes. to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, um, usually when we go out for evangelizing or I do evangelizing, I actually never feel fully prepared to do evangelism just mm -hmm. because you never know the people that you'll meet. You mm -hmm. never know what you what to expect when you go out. Um, but when I go out, like it takes me a few minutes or something to warm up. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I I pray when I go walking or when I see something, I really pray and ask God a mm -hmm. specific person or is there somebody I should speak to. And um, there was, for example, one time where there was a lady with a backpack and I felt like the Holy Spirit tell me like, you know, go help her with a backpack. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really was so unsure and shy to do this um, mm -hmm. because I really that felt uncomfortable in this uh, specific time. But then I like, 
got my courage and went up to this lady and help, uh, asked if I could help her. And actually that ended up then to turn out to be a really good conversation afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always, I think you are no never fully prepared um, mm -hmm. to go out and do evangelism. But I think it's also to do like, hey, have a lifestyle of just being able to evangelize and let the Holy Spirit speak to you whenever um, you're ready. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah, what's your take on, on that? I mean, I would say to go evangelizing out in the streets, that's mm -hmm. for me just a thing. I mean, what also Esther shared, it's sometimes so hard and I also never felt fully prepared, but I would say for me, it's when I have a method, when I have something where I know, okay, mm -hmm. I tried it before and it really worked. Um, I think that is something that really yeah, gives me the, the security to go out. Mm -hmm. And I would say for me, the biggest challenge is to evangelize in my work field, in like people that I really know really close or maybe family members, they are no Christians. And I think that's for me the biggest challenge because on the street, I always think, okay, the people maybe never see me again. So mm -hmm. when I fail, it's not like a big issue. But I think with family members, that's sometimes really where I have fear of man, where mm -hmm. I have just the feeling, oh, okay, Okay, what should I say now? Mm -hmm. And and I think what, what Esther also shared, like really to hear and listen to the Holy Spirit and I think for me prayer is then so important and yeah. to really yeah, be led. And sometimes I'm just thinking afterwards, okay, that was completely the wrong sentence and I was not really <laughs> listening to God. Yeah. And I think that also is something that just happens and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Leah, what's your take? Yeah, I also uh Ne I never feel prepared. Mm. I'm always nervous before, but um, usually, like, I go with someone, mm -hmm. and it really helps me. Mm. Um, like, especially someone who's good at introducing, and who's just there to support me. And then I can, like, really, like, ask the Holy Spirit, what should I ask this person? What should I say? Mm -hmm. Things like this. And just mm. pray a lot. Yeah. I love how you guys are, are talking of, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I think it's a question that I ask a lot on the program. Um, how do I know that this is the Holy Spirit that is talking mm -hmm. to me right now? Right, because there are a lot of, we have our own ideas in our minds. We have different voices, probably mm -hmm. a friend telling you, do this and that. Sometimes even social media has a voice of its own. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell that this is actually the leading of the Holy Spirit? Um, any, any of you can just jump in and <laughs> answer I, that. I would say when it's about evangelism, mm -hmm. I always know it's the Holy Spirit when it's something that from myself <laughs> I would not do. <laughs> yeah. So when God really tells me you should speak with this pe man there, there who was drunken, that, that's the mm -hmm. thing where I said, okay, normally I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And when I really feel inside of me, like yes. this, someone's like pushing a little bit and say, yeah, you can do that. I would say mm -hmm. that's for me a really like sign to say, okay, that's the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think also like the way I explain um, the Holy Spirit sometimes to people, mm -hmm. especially to um, teenagers or young adults, it's like we were all bo born with this gut feeling that we have like this. If you do something bad, you can mm -hmm. feel it inside of you like this gut feeling that maybe you're not supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. and I sometimes explain it like that's something that we have in ourselves. And maybe when you go evangelizing and you feel like maybe there's a person you're supposed to talk to, mm -hmm. you also get this feeling of, uh, you know, am I really supposed to do that? And of course, sometimes you do it and maybe it'll be a fail, but that doesn't mean that he didn't do a good job or anything or that you didn't hear the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you deal with, 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 you know, failure when it comes to evangelism? Because sometimes you go, you know, and have a conversation with this particular person and they just mm -hmm. seem to be very difficult people. It can be a little bit draining sometimes, right? Because you think you are throwing seeds on hard mm -hmm. ground. Yes. <laughs> and yet the scripture says, you know, the conviction is up to the Holy Spirit. Ours is to, you know, just lay the foundation and all. But how do you deal with, you know, that failure, especially when you've you've tried to talk to a person? Let me bring it down to family level, because mm. sometimes we have certain family members that maybe they're, they're mischievous in their ways. And you try by all means, you know, to share the gospel and they, they prove to be very difficult. How do you handle, you know, that pressure? Um, any of you guys can jump in <laughs> I think I mean, yeah. you okay. Um, 
I think that's really when you come to close people around you. I think for me, also, that's the hardest place to go and evangelize, especially to family members or your closest friends and stuff, because I realize that it's more easier for me to go out in the streets and share about God or when I'm here in Zambia, because I'm like, okay, I'm going to be here for a few weeks and then I know I'm going back to Germany. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I'm with my family or friends or people who are non-believers, I sometimes really feel uncomfortable sharing. Mm. But the one thing that I realize is the most important thing is that you have to love one another and you have to be able to respect also their beliefs or maybe what they think of before me trying to judge them because um, who am I to judge? Mm -hmm. Who am I to judge and say that you're doing this or that wrong? Um, and then that's the first step and then just really try and see how you can um, first interact with each other or get along with each other before trying to explain to them or telling them this and also talk to them in a loving way mm. and not just being harsh and telling them you're sinning, you're doing this or that. <laughs> Well, uh, I love it. All right. Uh, yeah. You wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah. I think for me, it's also like with family members and other people. If you have really a passion for, I don't know, paths, for motorcycles, for something mm. else, you yeah. would also like to share this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think to, to really have like the key is maybe to have really also a passion for Jesus. Because if you have a passion for Jesus mm. and you really speak with like passionate about it, I really think they will also listen to you. Um, and yeah, maybe they will not agree. but on all the other topics in life, they maybe also not agree. So I think to really share own experience and mm -hmm. really come back to the place where I can just share what I experience with God. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's also the thing where you cannot discuss about it. Then you have just, okay, that's your experience. Mm -hmm. And the people can make their own experience with yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Leah, you wanted to say something? I also think that just being patient with them and talking mm -hmm. over and over again. And mm -hmm. just not getting angry at them <laughs> and fighting with them, but just like be kind and patient to them. Mm. Talking about yeah, Jesus. so um, fruits of the spirit are very mm. important. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Most <laughs> definitely. All right, in case you just tuned in, this is uh, Yes, He Is on Radio Christian Voice. We're live on our Facebook page to go there and leave a comment. And of course, um, yeah, let's get talking and let us know where you are watching us from, where you're listening to us from. And uh, today's topic is very interesting. We're asking you how prepared you are to share the gospel. So um, I think the other question I would ask is at one, at what point should someone, you know, start going out there to share their faith? Let's say I've just given my life to Christ mm. today. <laughs> Am I equipped enough to go out today and start sharing? Uh, my my faith. Um, maybe Leah can answer because I think we were part of a story how Leah became yes. a Christian, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think a week later we were the first time out on the street. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I think in this week, two days. Later. Oh yeah, two days yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, so you you can go ahead. With so it. I I don't think I was equipped at all. Mm -hmm. I still went out and enjoyed it. Um, I went with other people though, and it was really important because I got to um, really like observe what they were doing and what they were saying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that I could learn more in this way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, but but how how was the how was it for you? You know, <laughs> I know it can be scary at times. You know, yeah. you you are you have absolutely no idea how to go about something, yeah. and then you are sort of thrown into the deep end. Yeah, it's definitely scary, especially um, because it was in Germany, mm -hmm. and the culture there is very, very cold. So mm. they're not very friendly. If you talk to them, <laughs> yeah. they will just like walk by you or say no, <laughs> go away. Mm -hmm. They'll be very mean. Um, and so I just, I wasn't really prepared and being thrown into the deep end mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, but like, I just, I began to learn more and more about God and the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so this definitely helped me more here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so <laughs> you, you know why I, I uh, brought up this, this, this topic is because Sometimes we feel because I, I go to church every every single week, right? And I sit and hear someone preach. And I automatically think it's very easy for me to go out there. And mm -hmm. but then we meet different people mm -hmm. from different backgrounds. Uh, so how does uh, empathy? What role does it play? You know, when when you're sharing your faith with someone. Mm. Yeah. Um, let me start with you, Esther. <laughs> Well, 
I think the first thing is, again, to really know, like, you know, Jesus, he was walking among sinners and he was doing all these things and he showed love and compassion towards his people. He didn't just right away judge them for who they were or where or what they were wearing or all these different things. Mm -hmm. there, so I think the first thing when you go and approach a person, just really be there, show love and show kindness and don't go right away and tell them, hey, I'm here, I'm a Christian, I want to bring you back to Christ or something because that, I don't think your conversation will go very long if you start that way. Mm -hmm. To really just show like, you know, be empathetic, show them that you really care for that person, that you really also care for their problems. Not just the main point of them coming back to Christ, but also just hearing them out if they have a problem, like offer them, hey, can I pray for you? Or I'll just assure them like, I know, I hear you, this is hard right now. Mm -hmm. And to just continue on. And yeah, I think the biggest important thing is really to show love. Interesting. Um, would you like to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I also think, um, especially like like for preparing for myself, is mm -hmm. to also like read the Bible. So right now mm -hmm. we really read read out Acts, and I think Acts is a story. When you read Acts, then you know that's like it's an evangelism missionary mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in every chapter you can read it over and over again. And so that's sometimes helpful for me to also see how Paul in Acts um, and all the others they're really also like speaking with people in different ways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. they were standing in front. I mean, like just in the middle of the street and just preaching to a lot of people around sometimes they were in church but sometimes they were also going to single person they were just there and to really speak individual to them mm -hmm. and um, I think so empathetic is really important to to realize for ourselves or to really ask also God okay how should I start this conversation mm -hmm. and I think yeah if you're doing it more often you also get more a feeling about it mm -hmm. yeah and what you said I would not like start a conversation with oh I see you sin right now I would always start a conversation with, hey, how are you? How are you feeling right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Hey, did you ever experience God in your life? Mm -hmm. And then you can hear their testimonies because, I mean, especially in Zambia, so many people, they have experience with God. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, they lost it, but they have experience in the past. So it's so cool to hear their stories and then to speak again. Mm -hmm. God is the same that you experienced months, years ago. And mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah, for me, especially here in Zambia, really a thing that I learned. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about cultures, um, obviously uh, the culture uh, where you're coming from and Zambia, two different, uh, you yes. know, uh, way two different extremes, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, Leah was talking of how Germany sometimes can be very unwelcoming when it comes to such. <laughs> but then how do you adjust, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. um, so that you can better meet and understand that particular uh, culture. It is especially yeah. that you've had a test of obviously yes. I don't know how many how many countries have you guys been to? Um I mean I've lived in four different countries. Mm -hmm. Like I've been a missionary in Ukraine and Eastern Europe yeah. for the past or for five years until the war started. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and I would say I evangelized in now four or five different countries yeah but i also experienced that culture is really their point yes. and mm -hmm. so i would say the culture where i come from is really the hardest culture to to like evangelize on the street mm -hmm. i would say if you have mm -hmm. good friends it's maybe easier but evangelize on the streets what leah shared the people would just say mm -hmm. to you go and they will really reject you in the middle of, mm -hmm. of the street on the door so it's really really hard to dare evangelize and mm -hmm. so i think zambia was for all of us or is experience when we are here and when we evangelize it's so cool because the people are so open mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think also we all come from countries they would call themselves kind of christian but I think then to be in Zambia and to see so many people, yeah. they are just open. They share about their belief. They share what they experience with God. They also have a knowledge about the Bible. And I think it's for us kind of easier to start a conversation and to just ask them questions about their belief. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you, you you want to say something? Yeah, <laughs> I think, and also at the same time, mm -hmm. um, with each country that we go to, it's also important to really respect that country. Um, expect a uh, respected how they see Christians, for example, um, in. Zambia, like, you know, dress the way as a Christian would dress or just dress appropriately. Or in Moldova, when I lived in Moldova, Christians didn't dance. So don't do that openly because you really want to respect the culture of Christianity in that mm -hmm. country. And that's also a big point of what we do here when we're here in Zambia is really we want to res be respectful and help the churches. And we don't want to come with our German, American, Canadian way and tell mm -hmm. them, like, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, interesting. 
how do you know and i think this is something that a lot of people miss out on knowing the right time to mm. you know share the gospel how do you know that this is the right time for me to share the gospel because sometimes uh, maybe someone can be opening just opening up to you over something and then mm. because you know you feel would we call it moved or perhaps it's just your emotions that mm. take over and you think of you know sharing the gospel with them and maybe that wasn't the right time so how does someone know when the right time is to you know just share the gospel i mean i would say like to share the gospel it's maybe always the right time i mm -hmm. think there is never a time where you say okay i would not speak about like that yeah. i'm a christian and that i really believe that god can move mm -hmm. um and that he can also like do in the life of the other person something but i just think it's good to be sensitive to say how much should i mm. share mm -hmm. so i just sometimes think it's good to have like a one minute a three minute and like a 10 minute or longer story and <laughs> um maybe that's sometimes hard for people who really like to preach and to really speak a lot mm. but i think then to bring it back to the focus to the important part and if the person is not so open but then you even shared one minute or you even shared three mm -hmm. minutes. And I think that's maybe a thing that I also learned. And when I feel then the person is in going away or just like rejecting, then it's also fine. But then I shared something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the importance of prayer. Very, very important in every person's yes. life. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I think the question I would ask is what role does it play in evangelism? especially when you're preparing yourself to go out there and share your faith. Yeah. Um, Leah, you want to take that up? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, prayer is like very important to me when it comes to evangelism. Mm -hmm. uh, like we always pray before we go. Um, and then just praying like while you're walking, uh, praying like for the people. It's important to pray for the people after you've talked to them, if mm -hmm. they like allow you to. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah and then also like praying for things like healing mm. is really like important and cool mm. thing <laughs> 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 love how you're saying a cool thing yeah it, it is um would you like to to add to that um sure i mean yeah as leah said praying should really be part of your evangelism and mm -hmm. it should be part of your day-to-day -day life and i think also what helps is like if you have a support group like behind you for example when we go evangelizing as a group maybe there's just one person talking to that mm -hmm. um, specific person right now but the people in the part and the back they can continue to pray and for that conversation to go well or walking like we also yeah. sometimes do prayer walks or different things so um, prayer is really a big part of evangelism. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can share a testimony to this, I think, to both yeah. parts. Um, so, so I was last summer with a group of people in Portugal and we did a summer nightlife outreach. So we evangelized in the nightlife and it was really tough. A lot of drunken people from whole Europe came to Portugal to this place to party. And every night, I mean, we were evangelizing really the, like the whole night. So, so before we go out, we really prayed all together and mm, sometimes we also we, it, uh, we call it treasure hunt so we pray for impressions mm -hmm. um, and so God gave one of our team members impression of a, of a woman with a white dress and we thought okay we will see this woman maybe outside and then some hours later um, someone saw this woman and we all were like, okay, what's now? What should we do now with this woman? And mm -hmm. one of our team, she started a conversation with her and she, like two men were with her and they had a conversation. And I don't know why, but some of us are just feeling, okay, this woman, we should just pray. Mm -hmm. So like what, what Esther shared before, we just like kept going praying. And I think this conversation was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And we prayed and prayed and prayed. And I think at the end, five, six of us just prayed for this conversation. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we realized that God was just showing us before that this woman is a distraction. She tries to pull this man away like five, six times from this conversation. But for these two men, the conversation was so, so important. Mm -hmm. And so us praying kept her the whole time there. And always when someone else started praying, she was like there again for five minutes. And mm -hmm. then she tried to go away. And then she was there again. And I 
think that was for me really an experience where I know, okay, it's so important to pray before, to ask God to show us mm. before things, but also to really support each other when we mm. go out and just pray together or stand in the yeah. back and pray. And that's so strong. Mm. Interesting. Um, relationships. Mostly when we talk about building, building relationships, we, we think of close family mm. members, right? Yeah. Um, I, I should build a relationship with, with my, my aunt or my wife or my children or my close friends mm. or my relatives. But when it comes to evangelism, um, even meeting the person for the very first time requires you to build some sort of understanding or relationship between the two of you. Uh, otherwise, they won't believe whatever it is you're yeah. saying. So how does one go about creating you know, a safe space and the relationship that can later on open up an opportunity for one to share their faith? I'll start with you, Esther. Um, also to have what I think is important, like have your personal testimonies, like mm -hmm. have testimonies, because I think every person has something, a story of where they felt God or where God intervened into their lives and be open to share that story. And to, because I think we are humans, we are really interacting in relationships. And so we also like to hear from each other's stories and just show that you're also a vulnerable person, like show that you also have emotions. And I mm. think that's important. And with building relationships, I mean, of course, it is a bit hard when we live in Germany and we're in Zambia and we're evangelizing and then we're going to leave again. But if you're in a different country, always evangelize with a church or have a number of a church or something ready where you could invite that person if he's becoming a first-time believer, like, you know, say, um, hey, here's a youth group that you can join and all these things, like, be ready to invest further into that relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, is, what is evangelism to you guys? What constitutes evangelism? What qualifies it to be evangelism? I'll throw this to you, uh, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's quite interesting because I also think that a lot of Christians or a lot of churches have different things in mind when we think about evangelism. Mm -hmm. And I just think evangelism is also a lifestyle. So evangelism mm -hmm. is to have in your heart to share about your belief and to share the gospel and to not be afraid what other people could think about the gospel, what other people could think about Jesus, but just be in the moment and just say, okay, everywhere where I go, I have Jesus in me and I have, I, I'm going with him out. So when, when I'm just, I don't know, in, in a supermarket, when I'm just I'm meeting someone somewhere and there is the opportunity to share something or to bless someone and just do it. And I think, so for me, evangelism is really a lifestyle and a way how we just live mm -hmm. and not only a thing to say, okay, now we're doing evangelistic action and we just do it once a month with the church and then we go out and we try to get a lot of numbers of people. And I think it's, it's so important to have it in everyday life mm -hmm. and to, to really also, yeah, be mm -hmm. a Christian in everyday life. Leah, what's your understanding of evangelism? To share about the gospel and to show like Jesus's love to people mm -hmm. um, yeah just to show how how he can work in your life and how he can work in someone else's life too mm. I'll throw the, the some question to, <laughs> to you as to yeah. Um, yeah, how Hannah explained it. It's a day-to-day -day life thing. Evangelism isn't just, you know, going out on the streets for one time. It's really living out your life. And um, I remember when I was 16, I went on this crazy missions trip and where we did a, a lot of evangelizing. But one thing they taught us was evangelizing is also when you're cleaning the toilet for someone or mm. when you're just serving somewhere else. It's just really a day-to-day -day life thing. And it's not just when you go to church on Sundays or something else. So live in the moment, be in the moment, and don't be afraid of sharing your faith or don't be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on a short break and we'll be right back in a bit right here on yours and my number one radio station. Good afternoon. Do you remember how you felt when you started following Jesus? When you first understood the gravity and excitement of the gospel? Not just in your mind, but deep in your heart when emptiness was filled with the fullness of love and your life changed forever. This message of hope has been resounding ever since Jesus said to his disciples, go tell everyone. 
a challenge that wasn't meant just for them. It was meant for me, for you, for us. We're not meant to keep hope to ourselves. When the whole world is asking questions, he is our answer. In a world of shortcuts, he is the way. In a world of lies, he is the truth. And in a world of death and destruction, he is the life. We can help them know. Yes, He Is exists to help you know how to share the gospel with confidence by growing your relationship with Jesus and connecting in meaningful ways with people around you. For those who know Jesus but aren't sure their story is enough, we're helping them know. For those wanting to share but aren't sure how to start the conversation, we're helping them know. For those who have never experienced the gospel or heard the story of Jesus, our movement of people are helping them know. We're helping Mulenga know her purpose and mission. Mulenga is helping Mapalo know the power of her testimony. Mapalo is helping Tembo know more about Jesus. Together, we're helping the world know Yes, he is. Welcome back to the second hour of uh, Yes, He Is. Bit of a sounds of Pastor Washi opened this particular hour. And of course, in case you just tuned in, we are still on Yes, He Is, a program designed to help you evangelize effectively and share Jesus Christ boldly. My name is Lewis. I'm your host as always. And I still have uh, in the studio Hannah, Leah, as well as uh, Esther. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, a lot of interesting stories that I've heard in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, when we went on a break, before we went on a break, I think we were talking about, um, what, what was the last question or conversation we had? Um, building relationships. Yes. Yeah. How you build um, a relationship and all. Um, but I think we're living in, in a time where social media is literally everything, yes. right? Everyone has got a smartphone. Well, not everyone, but most people have smartphones today. So how can one um, use social media to evangelize? I'll start with you, uh, Esther, and then I'll throw it to Han and Leah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so social media is something totally new i mean with this new generation they're mm -hmm. literally growing up with um technology like when i i'm not super old but when i was born there wasn't the internet or like having a smartphone yet but then when i was like 11 up to now we've always had phones on us and then at some point smartphones mm -hmm. and then you started to have social media and i think social media also has such a big is a platform where you can spread so much good news, but mm -hmm. at the same time, of course, also bad news or there's a bad influence that come to it. Um, so it always depends on with social media and how you could spread the gospel. Like for me, um, having a private like Instagram account or Facebook for like friends and family, um, I'm op open about my faith on it um, mm -hmm. because yeah, I don't want to hide things and uh, you know, on different platforms that Instagram or these things, you can also have like your private and where certain people could see your story or something. So mm -hmm. even that's a platform of how you can share your gospel or share your faith. Um, and then when it comes to like for an organization or something, you always have to be careful with what you post or what you say because it can all be turned around. Or mm. So I think personally, social media has a good platform. Like it has, you can have really good influence on it into the young generation. But at the same time, of course, it can also do a bad influence on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll throw this to you. Um. <laughs> yes. Um, I think we are not the best example. And we, will, we will share a little bit later because, I mean, I think, um, so Leah can share her experience a little bit later. But, I mean, for me, it's like I had social media for, for some years, and especially my teenager years. It was so rough for me to, to really have a good balance on, okay, how... Uh, what should I post and how can I be a Christian on this platform? And I think I, I try to also manage sometimes also with like songs or with like some lyrics to also when I posted photos to, to yeah, do it with that. Mm -hmm. But I think I just realized over the years that for me, social media was a lot of time that I just spent on my mm -hmm. phone. And I think I was not really following a lot of like 
good influencers or like Christians. I was following like the whole world. And I just realized that for me that had such an um, influence in my life that I was just with my brain everywhere, but not in me, not in Christ. I was everywhere. And so I decided, I think like two years ago that I just like, uh, I think I deleted my Facebook, my uh, Instagram, I think nearly everything. And I started over just with like messaging apps and just said, okay, that's for me the point where I can spread also Christ uh, in one on one conversations. And I don't want to be like the person who posts like a lot of things anymore. And I also don't want to be influenced in things that are not good for me. Mm -hmm. Leah. Um, yes. Yeah, I don't have any social media. Um, I used to have it, but um, I just, it became like a time spender that mm -hmm. I wouldn't like use to like train my brain or spend time with God or any of this kind of stuff. And so it wasn't valuable to me, mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure that other people can use it and and like learn about God through it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let's go on a short break. I don't know what's happening to one of my cameras. So we'll be right back in a bit. Don't go anywhere. Let me just try and fix it right now. All right. Don't go anywhere. Uh, a bit of a sounds of DJ music, Mr. Mando, uh, coming through with no one but you. Nina Sakila, Muli Fort, Muli Boss, Duma Laws, Muli Mob, putting glasses in the air. Yeah. Nina Sakila, where we go down, where we show up, where the arms are, Yolo slogan, yeah, we really didn't care. Been visiting liquor stores in every corner. Too fast running red lights, speaking the red. Look at the color of my cornea. Ain't taking sharp turns, cause I was told that death is chilling on the corner. Trying to find peace at the bottom of the bottle, liver saying I caught. <laughs> yeah. Then I met up with the cornerstone. He was looking past all my flaws. He forgiven me before my wrongs. I shouldn't even be in the game, but then he made me the poster boy. I make a toast for sure. Dimwe bakamba, mwine lubaza. Oloba ni taya panja, muma ni sanka. Muna ni pasa banzanga, gelo na banja. Chito yene ni mabaza, muma supply. Yeah. Cause I miss search for all eternity long. There is no one like you. Cause no one else can touch my heart like you do. There is no one like you. Yeah. There is no one but you. So you are 
Welcome back. Sorry for that short uh, interruption. Beautiful sounds of uh, Divine Gift, Ingutu and Mr. Mando. It's called No One But You. All right. Uh, and of course, we're still getting back to our conversation. Um, we'll just treat that as a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back, guys. Um, we were talking about social media. And after... We went on a short break. Uh, I was telling you how that I use my personal mm. account um, to share devotions. Mm. So anything that is Christian related, I post there. If someone has got has done a very good, nice um, TikTok video, I'll get it posted there. And that is the way that I use mm. my account to counter what you know um, the world is doing, because there's a lot of um, weird stuff yes. on social media you know yes. weird content that is there and and it's i think it's our responsibility to counter what is there mm. with the word of god so that's how i basically use use my uh, my my social media account you mentioned of how <laughs> you know yeah. both of you deleted your your mm. your <laughs> socials and all yeah. and i think it's yeah. a perfect preference right yes. if you feel this is not serving any purpose in my life, or perhaps it's taking um, God's place. You'd rather let go of it and have mm -hmm. um, something else to occupy your, you know, your um, your life. Um, also, in the background, we were talking of the cool things that you guys have been doing while in Zambia. That is also evangelism <laughs> on its own. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'll allow you just to share some of the experiences that you've had. Okay. Yeah. In um, who do I start with? Oh, wow. We had so many experiences. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ever, Leah, why don't you start? Oh, yes. Um, well, we, we've been to a few orphanages, mm -hmm. um, Mothers Without Borders and Fountain of Hope. Mm -hmm. uh, we also went to a village, mm -hmm. Kampasa, mm -hmm. and uh, did a kids program and a teenager program there, and mm -hmm. a little bit of just door-to-door uh, -door evangelism. Mm -hmm. um, what else have we done? Maybe like a testimony. I think like, mm. especially with evangelism, it's so cool. Also, when we go out together, I think Leah has such a heart f mm. also for healing. And yeah. I think it's so biblical to have that. Mm. When we look at Acts, what I mentioned before, to really have that. And mm. uh, I think one story, I mean, maybe, maybe you can st share one story yeah. like of healing, because I think that's also evangelism. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so um, I was with 
um, two other people, uh, two locals, mm -hmm. and uh, we we met an older lady and we talked to her for a bit and she's Christian and uh, she told us her testimony and then she asked uh, if we could pray for her sister mm -hmm. who has stomach cancer and for her uh, she had knee pain and so um, I we stepped we were on the road so we went off the road and mm -hmm. um, I asked if I could uh, like kneel down and touch her knees and then I just prayed, like commanding the Holy Spirit to come and and heal her knees. And um, yeah, she like bent and straightened her knee, and she was like, "Yeah, it's better." And I asked if I could pray again. She's like, "No, it's good." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, wow! Yeah. Wow, that, that's really nice. Um, ish, those are good testimonies. You guys were sharing how. You know that you would love Leah to just share her story of how she yes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she got born again. I'm now interested to know yes. how you got born again here. <laughs> um, okay, well, I did something called a discipleship training school, mm -hmm. and so I was in Canada and I I wanted to travel somewhere, mm -hmm. and I didn't really know about God. Like I knew about God, but I didn't really have a relationship with Him or know Him. Um, but then uh, my stepdad convinced me to do a d uh, discipleship training school. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'll go to Germany because I wanted to go there anyways. <laughs> yeah. And then I, yeah, I went there and I started learning more about God and how to have like a relationship with him. And um, then we had a week of teaching on Holy Spirit. Mm hmm and um, we watched a movie <laughs> called um, The Last Reformation. Mm -hmm. And I just learned about how important baptism is. And I just felt really strongly that I wanted to be baptized. And then Interesting. I, yeah, the next day I was baptized. And, wow. Yeah. And right. I think we all love the story because it's so cool that like you were just not really thinking about mm. what can happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I mean, we also did a discipleship training school and I mean, in like different other countries, but we met her also then in Youth with a Mission in, in Germany. And I think to have someone who's just said, okay, I want to know what, what I believe and so I can just mm. learn more about it. Mm -hmm. And then to see that God is just coming in those situations where you just think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe we can just look what will happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And God is really in these situations. And I think that's why we really really love the story of you because mm -hmm. that's really a testimony how God mm. is doing things and not like things from our own. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, earlier on we, we were talking of, you know, um, who, who really a Christian is because especially in Zambia, majority of the people that you will meet on the streets will actually say, well, I identify as a Christian, mm. but then they probably don't know who a Christian is. So yes. maybe for the sake of someone that is tuning in for the very first time and they're wondering if they're Christian or not, <laughs> who who is a Christian? Let's yes. start from there. And then maybe we go to how then do I better position myself mm. as a Christian and find a Bible-believing church? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw this to you, um, Esther. So I think one thing that we noticed the most while we were here in Zambia is if you ask somebody if he's a Christian, mm -hmm. he'll usually say yes right away and one thing we know is that Zambia is a Christian nation which is really cool and so when he says yes we go into this conversation we ask him oh could you share more about that or did mm -hmm. you experience Jesus because one thing that we realized that many people don't know is if you were born into a Christian family that doesn't make you a Christian right away mm -hmm. we often think that that because we were raised up as a Christian or we were born into a Christian family equals we are Christians but actually uh, to be a Christian or to have a personal relationship with God, you really have to invite Jesus into your heart and you really have to open yourself up and say, yes, Jesus, I want you to come. And also like the things that we were sharing about day-to-day -day evangelism, like day-to-day -day evangelism also means of just talking to God the entire time, every day, and really just going to him. And one of the things that we also got after Jesus resurrected and went back to heaven is that we got the Holy Spirit. And also to receive the Holy Spirit and really like what I was sharing about this, it's like having this gut feeling inside of you and mm -hmm. also just obey and listen to this person, to to the Holy Spirit and what he, he has to tell you. Mm -hmm. So if you are 
um, born into a Christian family and you um, say you're a Christian, I think that's one more step that you have to do. And that one more step is to really invite Jesus personally into your heart and say, yes, Jesus, I want to live with you and I want to really give myself to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you want to add? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think with, with always with this decision, there's also a change in life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. maybe for mm -hmm. some people, that's like big changes. So I don't know, like when when they have really like doing rude things, or maybe they have really the root of bitterness yeah. in them. So they're really, you know, you can just see, okay, they they have really a lot of bitterness, and to also give that to Jesus, I mm -hmm. think um, that's so important because I think it's always like. Um, to, to take on that Jesus really saved us and that he really gave mm. everything for us means also that I give everything, like yes. all my sins and everything to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like is an ongoing process to do it every day new. And I think that's a question also that I ask a lot to people, hey, so where do you go the first when you, you feel, okay, I messed up. Mm -hmm. And I encourage the people most of the time just to say, go back to Jesus immediately because there are just things happen in our life that we are like having a feeling, oh, we turn like a little bit away from God mm -hmm. and to coming back to him over and over again and to also really ask for forgiveness because in the Bible it's written, he will immediately forgive you. And I think that's so important. And it's not like a thing of, okay, now you can do whatever you want because mm -hmm. he will forgive you. It's really a thing of, I want to have a lifestyle that I want to become more like mm. Jesus. And that mm. means to go also out and to spread like the gospel. Mm -hmm. But that also means to really see, okay, I want to read in the Bible. I want to grow more. I want to know him more. Mm. And I think really this desire to know more, that's really is, is so mm -hmm. good. And I think that's really a thing that also we experience just every time when we go out, every time when I read the Bible, I get a little bit more desire to mm. know more and to go more out. And I think that's so powerful. In it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love how you've, you've, you've talked of how, you know, reading the Bible is very important mm -hmm. uh, in one's personal growth. Leah decided to go and go to disciple school, right? Just to learn more about the, mm -hmm. um, what she believes in. Right. But, but I would like to know to someone that is listening right now, what are some of the resources that you can uh, you can recommend, you know, mm. that person to either read, mm. listen to or just engage themselves in order for them to just have that positive personal yeah. growth? Um, who would like to I you want to start, pick it up? Yeah, um, there's uh on YouTube, there's a channel called Bible Project. Mm -hmm. I believe there's also a website. Yes. And it gives a lot of good information on, like, the overview of each of the books in the Bible mm -hmm. and, uh, like, a bunch of other topics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the first step that you can do if you have a smartphone, just download the Bible app. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the Bible app, you can set up a notification that every day you get the verse of the day on your phone. And it will be just one little notification. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's maybe a little baby step of like starting to read the Bible. And I think also um, you can see little um, stories about it or daily devotionals. And you can also make a plan. So even downloading a Bible app already will do that to help you already with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mm -hmm. I mean, like like the podcast that, that you have here, like with mm -hmm. Yes He Is, I think there are so many podcasts out. And I think also to just think, okay, I mean, just start with one podcast and just like listen more to it and say, okay, every day I want to read a little bit the Bible, mm -hmm. maybe one chapter or something like this before mm -hmm. like... Um, watching a movie uh, like a, a video of bible project to understand more because sometimes it's so hard yes. to mm -hmm. understand yeah. the bible and i think then also to just have some podcasts some music worship music where you just think okay that's really encouraged me i think that's so important yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. what's the importance of of being connected to a youth group uh, i think we most of the times overlook this fact right yes. um for me i was when I just gave my life to Christ so many years ago, I was involved. And I think that helped me grow in, in my spiritual mm. walk because of, you know, the the group that I was involved in. So I was a part of a youth group in our church. And I actually shared with you guys that would actually go to YWAM in, mm -hmm. in Livingston mm. and minister there. And some of the lessons I learned back then I am applying them on mm. radio today, mm. right? Mm. Um, so to, to, to someone that is wondering, okay, I, I'm, I'm a believer, I'm born again, I go to church. 
but probably maybe after <laughs> a Sunday service, I quickly leave and go home. Mm. They're not yet connected to uh, a youth group. What is the importance of being connected to a youth group? Um, I, For me, like, mm-hmm. I think youth group are also just being with friends amongst you who are Christians are so important. Mm-hmm. Um, for me personally, um, I went, for example, to a summer camp each year in the summer. Like, And I started when I was eight years old, and I, then I went until I think... 2021 was the very or 2022 was the very first year where I haven't been at that camp and I honestly say that if it weren't for that summer camp and for that youth group mm-hmm. that I don't know if I would still be a Christian because of all the people who spoke into my life and who really influenced me in that time of my life and yeah at the beginning it was hard I, I hated that summer camp in the beginning but with mm-hmm. each new year yeah. it did become more fun and fun and so I really think it's so important to to have these people around you and in a youth group the cool thing is that you have your friends you have the people who are the same age as you but then also you have the youth pastors the youth leaders and they see you for who you are and they really have this heart to invest in you and that's something that's so special and so important mm-hmm. Mm. Fully. And I would also say, like, my youth, I mean, that I made a own decision for Jesus, that mm. was because of a youth group, because mm-hmm. I had just other people who encouraged me to, to grow in my faith. And I think that's so important. And it's it's great if they're in yeah. the same age group than, than I am. And I mean, that's like always changing, of course, but it's mm. so important um, to have that. And not only the Sunday service, yes. but also to, to have like one mm. step further. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, usually when, 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 when we meet people, especially street evangelism, we probably evangelize them then. But there are times that we have little papers, right? Mm. Where there are details of a church and all that. But let's say I gave my life to Christ today. How do I identify a Bible-believing church? Mm. Right, Because especially in the times that we're in, it's very... Yes. You really need to be very careful which which church you're going to, mm-hmm. right? Uh, some churches, will, well, they're churches, but they're not really, their principles are not really based on the Bible. Mm. So how does one, uh, you know, identify a Bible-believing church? I mean, first, I would say it, also the Bible really encourages us to prove everything that we hear. And mm-hmm. um, I think it's written uh, in Timothy, um, and I think it's, so important to also take that and so i mean you don't see from the outside if it's Mm. like how the church is so i think you have to go there to to one two three sunday service to really have a feeling for it and i would also always when a pastor or someone is mentioning bible verses write them down read them afterwards Mm -hmm. and just prove it because i mean i would say the truth that we have is the bible and that's maybe like the only truth that we have Mm -hmm. and i think to prove everything that people said with the bible and i mean for me it's sometimes i mean like the bible is a big book and so sometimes i'm just Googling, when people also say sentence, I just Google, okay, is that somewhere written in the Bible? Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm so happy there for Google that we can just like (laughs) ask a (laughs) search um, in in the internet because there are so many answers that we get. And of course, I always read then when I get there an answer actually in the Bible, if it's true and if it's not Google who give Mm -hmm. me a wrong answer. Mm -hmm. But I would really prove everything that I hear really with the Bible. And especially when we have, sometimes we have just a weird feeling Mm -hmm. about things prove it yeah. because sometimes it's also the holy spirit who give you the weird feeling and to really t- tell you okay maybe something is wrong here mm. yeah mm-hmm. leo you you have something to say um no <laughs> 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 I agree. <laughs> so we we we, yeah. we have a question coming through from Daphin uh, Norwood so uh, Daphin says how do you choose a podcast so when it comes to Christian podcasts, yes. how can one choose a better podcast, especially for beginners? Yeah, yeah. I think one thing that I did um, as I look back is I just Googled Christian podcasts or good mm-hmm. Christian podcasts. And then I just went through it because there are also, again, so many different things and so many different um, topics that you can choose from. Mm-hmm. And um, so you can really just if you have a uh, Google podcast or YouTube or whatever, just look it up. And one thing also that with the discipleship training school that we do in Germany is also with each topic of the week, we also tell the students every time, you know, don't take what we're saying, like, don't just take it word for word, 
always look at it, always check if it's right what we're saying and don't believe it right away. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with podcasts. You know, listen to a podcast, see if you like it or not. And then um, from that, then really go into the word, see what it means, see what it says, and then choose from there. But I think Google is a, a big help there when it comes to finding a good podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I found some. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, one thing that people that are not born again usually refer to Christians as is that mm. we're a bit pushy sometimes or judgmental. <laughs> so how do I share my faith to someone without coming out as mm. pushy or, or judgmental? You can, anyone can pick, pick up this question. I mean, I would say it's always also how we evangelize. Mm -hmm. And I think if we evangelize with the goal, okay, I want to die really a yes from this person, that this person really said, I want to be a believer. I think sometimes it happens that then people felt themselves, like they felt pushed mm -hmm. and maybe they also just say something that they not really believe. And it's not about us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Jesus knows if they make a real decision for Christ or not. But I think um, sometimes it's just good to really share own experience, share a Bible story and just like feel where the person is and mm. not push too much yeah. because or then maybe have the contact and, and have like two, three, four, five talks, invite the person to the church because I think on the street when we do evangelism, that's not a place where every person has to mm. make a decision. I think just some people are people who can like respond immediately and some people just need some more yeah. time and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for Jesus, that's totally fine. Mm. Yes. All right. Um, is there such a thing as saying all the wrong things when you're evangelizing? <laughs> you know, if there are right words that you can say during evangelism, are there any wrong words that you can, you can, one can say during evangelism and how do you avoid them? Maybe saying you're, you're going to hell. <laughs> that wouldn't be a good conversation starter. Mm -hmm. um, but again, with that, just be guided by the Holy Spirit of mm. what he's wanting you to say to that person. And Sometimes you can really just feel it and you're just starting to speak out something and it is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're wrong words, I don't think there are wrong words. I just think maybe put them in the right context or put them in the way that it's understandable and not in a way that will come over judgmental or will make a person shut down. Mm. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you ever used your, your personal testimony, just that, to, mm -hmm. to evangelize to someone? And, and if you have, uh, would you mind sharing, you know, your testimony? I know people would say they have all these ideas that a testimony is supposed to be that that one big thing that, <laughs> <Yes>. you know, <laughs> happened in, in one's life. But do you have a testimony that you can share with someone out there? I mean, I can start. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I, sh I shared before about like the party scene where, where I did like a summer evangelism. And mm -hmm. And for me, the hardest point were there that I was confronted with a lot of German people. And I shared before, Germans are a little bit rude sometimes or really rejective. And so I I was really at that point where I thought, oh, I'm now in Portugal and I should like to go to my own people and share mm. in German something because I was so used to evangelizing English. And so I started to tell my testimony and I really shared that I'm a pastor child. And so I was grown up as a Christian, but um, I had really hard times as teenagers. So I struggled with a lot of mental health issues. I had a lot of thoughts that I'm not good enough and, and all of this. Um, and I was really at a deep point of my life and I asked Jesus, okay, Jesus, but what should I do with all of this? I don't want to have all of the thoughts. I don't want to have all of the doubts. I really, I want to believe in you. Um, and I think that was like the point where I also had to make a decision for Jesus. And mm -hmm. I really said at this moment, and I know that I was sitting in my room, was crying on the floor and just said, okay, Jesus, I, I want, want to be free from all of this. And I want to take everything that you have in my life. And it was not that all of my problems stopped immediately because that's happened to some people, but not to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but I just really felt that Jesus started at this point when mm -hmm. I was, I think, 14, 15 in my room. He started really a process with me. And that's the reason why I'm now here. Um, and I think that's something that I really share that God can change things mm -hmm. in your life and thoughts and just everything in your life. And it's more about my decision mm -hmm. and not because of him, because yes. he's just there and he's just waiting. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah I, for me, like also, 
I think the when I was a child, of course, I also grew up in a Christian household and as a missionary child. So God and like growing up Christian, that was like super normal for me. Mm -hmm. But when I was 17, I was at, a, at that summer camp and I had realized that I have to make a decision to live wholeheartedly for God because that's when I realized that just being in a Christian ha family and in a Christian household doesn't mean right away that you're a Christian. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest decisions that I had to make. I, I decided that I wanted to get baptized, mm -hmm. but I also knew if I make that decision, that means that I have to live 100% for God. Mm -hmm. and I would have to give up everything. And I like also knew like with family stuff at home and all these things, I also knew that that would be something I would have to give up. And I said yes to that and got baptized. And that was 12 years ago. And I mean, my life has been a, an adventure ever since, like going into missions, living in Ukraine and other things. But with taking that decision and saying yes to Jesus, as Hannah shared, your problems won't go away right away or you mm. won't have a perfect life. You won't have a perfect life. But I think when I look back, you'll have a really adventurous life and you'll experience so many things mm -hmm. through that. Yeah. Um, Leah, you want to share your, you've, you've she's already shared, shared that, you know, <laughs> you've already shared your testimony. <laughs> Now, um, we we meet people with, with different beliefs, mm. you know, different worldviews. How do you, how do you start to strike a balance between, you know, respecting their views, mm -hmm. but also standing firm on your beliefs as, yeah. as, as a born-again Christian? Mm -hmm. um, who? I can start. I okay. think... It's always there. I mean, what, what did Jesus? I mean, Jesus did like exactly the same. He had all around people uh, around him. They were not really, um, yeah, they had other world views. They were like diverse, a lot of sinners. And I think what Jesus always did is that he really, yeah, asked him also how they are doing mm -hmm. and really to s see the people in their situation and just like um, being in love around mm -hmm. them. And I would say that's the thing um, that, that's so important for me personally, that I don't want to have then a discussion about worldview. I don't want to have a discussion about topics. I want to share what I believe and my experience. Yes. And also to just say to them, hey, I believe Jesus loves you. And I believe that this, what I shared before, is also open for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just to, to give them give that back and don't have like discussion about like big other topics because in this discussion we can lose so fast like mm. our track and like the thing that we really want to share mm -hmm. yes all right as we're coming to the end of our conversation i did tell you guys that two hours is very very yeah. <laughs> little here um wh what is it that you'd love to tell our listener and viewers on on, on facebook what is it that you, uh, what is God putting upon your hat that you should share with them? I'll, I'll start with you, Esther, then uh, Leah, and then we'll finish up with, <laughs> um, with Hannah. Um, I think really to tell you guys and for everyone who's listening, like you are worthy and you have so much worth and you're valuable and to God, uh, whoever you are, whatever you're currently in or where you are, like that doesn't matter. God loves you everywhere and anywhere you are and you are his precious son or daughter mm -hmm. so just know that and whatever wherever you are in what situation just don't give up mm -hmm. all right yeah yeah um one second <laughs> 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 yeah i i think i just want to say that uh yeah whatever you're going through mm -hmm. any tough thing that you're going through you can always come back mm -hmm. to god like always pray to God, ask him things, um, and just listen to what he says because mm -hmm. yeah. it's really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I would say like with this all whole evangelism topic and sometimes when we hear all of these thoughts from other people, we just think, I don't think that I can do that or that sounds so awesome what other people can do. And I think I really want to speak in you that when you look at the whole Bible, Jesus uses everyone mm. in different ways and the people also maybe don't feel prepared at mm. all but god really used them and i think i really want to speak to you today that god will use you when yes. you just say i'm mm. ready and i will go mm -hmm. all right this is where we get to wrap it up for today but like i always say uh love your partner like christ loves the church and always know that you're quick 
you're sharp, you're good looking, and you're most <laughs> definitely a major blessing. We always leave with this scripture that we believe in, um, coming through from First Corinthians chapter three and verse six. The Bible says in New Living Translation, I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Mm. So go out there, reach out to one person, plant a seed, connect them to a Bible believing church so they can be watered. But God will do the growing. Beautiful sounds of Antonio the Yellow Dove taking us out of the studio today. It's called Rejoice. All right. Rejoice that you have given your life to Christ. Rejoice that you are on your way to lead someone to Christ. Rejoice that you are fearfully and wonderfully met in the presence of a God, of, of the Lord. From me, it's bye-bye. And of course, I'll be back on Friday for yet another exciting edition of Yes, He Is. But for now, keep it locked on right here on Radio Christian Voice.